Hey guys, welcome back to the Bruce Williams channel. In this video, I'd like to talk about what I believe is Omega's best offering that they have in their current product catalog. And I know that's a completely subjective statement to make, but this watch, it has an allure and appeal that is so awesome in person. It's unlike anything that they've done in recent memory. And I think Omega has definitely nailed this release under the Specialties Collection. Again, this is the CK859 reissue from Omega. It's based off of a sector dial from the late 1930s, so pre-World War II. It's a very old design. And Omega has done an excellent job at recreating the details and doing it in a very sharp way. All of the printing is crisp and clean. I love this sector dial design with the open nine, the double step down to the subsidiary seconds, the thermally blued hands. Notice the hands are nice and long. They look uh, very proportional. They look in fact exactly like the hands found on the vintage reference. I even like the fact that Omega went with old school branding, old school font for the logo. Now the dial is crafted out of silver and you can see that designation just north of the hand stack, AG925 silver. And it's noticeably not as bright as the renders would suggest on Omega's website. It's definitely more of a cream, almost a taupe in person. And then depending on the light that you look at the, you know, the dial, the face of the watch at, it will brighten up and it will look silver, but it will not look bright white. And I love this. I assume with age, this will slightly patina being crafted out of silver. The only thing that, <laughs> the only thing that kind of bothers me is the fact that Omega likes to designate what their dials are made out of on the face of the dial. So you'll see that AG925 designation, which is surprisingly noticeable. And now that I've pointed it out to you, you'll probably not be able to unsee this, but it's almost distracting. In fact, when you look at the face of this watch, it almost reminds you of, you know, you're looking at a picture of a listing on Chrono 24 and you get that annoying Chrono 24 watermark, that micro watermark. I'm getting similar vibes with that designation here on this beautiful 859 reissue. So that's kind of my one complaint with an otherwise absolutely beautiful, absolutely sharp and well-executed dial that you can see under a dome sapphire crystal. It's a rather dramatic dome and there is anti-reflective treatment on both sides of the crystal. Now let's flip this watch over and take a look at the back, which is arguably as exciting, if not more exciting than the sector dial side of the watch, you'll see this is a numbered edition, and I have no idea how many Omega are planning to make, but you'll see the serial number of the watch will be the number of the uh, of the production, and the one that I filmed at OC Tanner Jewelers, my local authorized dealer here in Salt Lake City, Utah, as you saw from the intro <laughs> to this video, the rather aggressive rock intro uh, for this awesome watch. This one is number 1644. Now, again, I don't know how many Omega are planning to make. They could make this for 10 years. They could make this for 10 months. So I think if you like it, go ahead and buy one because you never know what the Swatch Group is going to do with a novelty release like this that's under the Specialties Collection. If you look at this, it's not the Brett... Excuse me, my dog. Forgive my dog. <laughs> if, if you look at this, it's not the bread and butter when it comes to Omega sales. It's not... It's not a dive watch. It's not a Speedmaster. It doesn't carry ceramics. Heck, it doesn't even have a bracelet. This is different. This is retro inspired, and it's not retro inspired from, you know, the 60s or the 70s. This is from the late 1930s. So I think the consumer base that's going to be very enthusiastic about this may be rather limited. You might just be into history or a massive Omega enthusiast, or like me, you're kind of both. You're a watch enthusiast that loves history and you love retro designs. And again, please excuse my dog and my children out there. I think someone came to visit. We're going to continue. We're going to keep filming here. Um, let me uh, let me talk about the movement. This is the coaxial 8926 caliber. This carries the coaxial movement architecture. It is an in-house designed and executed movement. And we have in-series twin mounted barrels that hold 72 hours of power reserve, which is three days 
of power reserve. There is a free sprung balance with variable inertia regulation system for regulating the balance, which essentially means there are very small screws within the balance that you can screw out or in to affect the inertia as that balance oscillates and thereby regulating the movement. Now the hairspring will be crafted out of silicon and we have a very lovely arabesque finish, this pattern here that's machined finish, but it is very well executed. It catches the light nicely. And again, I don't know which is the more exciting side of the watch, the dial side with the silver sector dial, the thermally blued hands, the old school font, or the reverse side with this hand wind in-house movement that carries three days of power reserve, blackened screws, and just overall very pleasant movement architecture. It's anti-magnetic. It's very well dialed in. It will be certified a chronometer and also certified by the Swiss Federal Institute of metrology. So a great movement and a great design. The watch is a great size. Let's talk about negative elements here. I think some of you will moan and groan about the water resistance only being 30 meters and not having a screw down crown. I don't mind that at all. Uh, you know, if I'm going to dive, if I'm going to get in the water, I'm going to use a dive watch. I'm not going to be wearing a sector dial design from the 1930s. And so I don't think every watch should be dive watch, you know, dive watch standards of water resistance. So that doesn't bother me. But uh, I did mention that little uh, AG925 designation is rather attention grabbing. And I think you'll agree with me. Every time you see macro video, every time you see a picture of this, or you go to Omega's website, your eye is going to be drawn to that little tiny dark designation on the dial which is kind of frustrating. The other thing is the value aspect. This comes in at $6,500 full retail. And you compare that to uh, you know other watches from Omega at the same price. I'm talking about the Planet Ocean and the Aquaterra and the Seamaster 300. All of those come with very nice bracelets with micro adjust clasps. And this comes on you know, a very basic leather strap with tack stitching done in a cream tone that will slightly match that AG925 silver dial. I don't think the value is particularly here in terms of what you're getting. Uh, just a beautiful watch, great size, great movement, but no bracelet, no micro adjust, no different options in that respect. And that is something that we value as watch enthusiasts. We want the value and we want those options from the OEM. But other than that, it's a very <laughs> exciting watch. I really like it. I think this and the dark side of the moon with the meteorite dial are Omega's most potent releases. They're the most exciting releases in the current product catalog. I like some of the other ones, but I'm telling you these two, especially the CK859 reissue, the sector dial, Omega is doing great things here, and I would absolutely love to own this watch and to use this watch in rotation, and uh, we'll see what happens. But guys, reach out with questions. Thanks for watching. Follow my friend, does not TikTok on Instagram. He is my sales associate at OC Tanner Jewelers, and if you're here in Utah, swing by, take a look at the beautiful store down on State Street downtown. It's uh, really quite a lovely experience. So again, thanks, guys. Catch you next time. Yeah, we ran out of patience for your love with a cold hard hatred.